Hello everyone, welcome to an exclusive interview. We have to my right, Kevin Partida of the San Jose Earthquakes alongside Alex Morgan. We have quite, quite the interview coming up. Please stay tuned. Well, Kevin, thank you for uh, accepting the invitation. It's a pleasure to have you here with us. Uh, how are you feeling? Yeah, no problem. Thanks for the invite. First of all, feeling good. Uh, just finished that that game yesterday, so it was good to get out and you know get some good first team minutes. Uh, you know, after a long, long recovery. Talk to us a little bit about you know the recovery, what it's been like for you. Uh, obviously, you you broke into the first team in the summer of, of last year and you know you were you were taking off you were in the starting 11 you were in Mikel Stare's plans and then suddenly you had that that injury in Portland right where uh, you fell to the ground and, and uh, to the eye to us it didn't seem like anything major happened but uh, certainly there was something that needed to be fixed yeah everything moved moved pretty fast last year you know since the beginning um, the jump from from Reno to to the Quakes, and then jumping straight into the starting lineup those those first few games, and then just like I said, uh, you know, unfortunately, having that injury pretty quickly after just a couple games as well. Uh, but yeah, it was it was tough, but it's now in you, the past. Now you're back. You you played uh, all of I think 60 solid minutes against Real Valladolid last night. Uh, do you feel like you're back to 100%? Uh, you're the player you were last year still? Yeah, I think I think every time you're injured, especially for a long time like that, like you you don't necessarily come back the exact same player. Some, you know, mm -hmm. you watch so much that sometimes, you know, you start to pick little things that you start to, you know, stick with you or incorporate maybe. But in terms of, uh, you know, health and fitness, yeah, I think in, in essence, uh, I'm 100% back. How was it, you know, during during that time that you were recovering, obviously being here and then all of a sudden just being grounded completely? Um, you know, did, did you lose sleep? Did you even consider, well, maybe I might not be able to, to get back into the league, I might not be able to play, or I might not be able to be that same player that I once was? Uh, did, did any of that run through your head whatsoever? Yeah, for sure. I think you just take it day by day, really, uh, you know, like I said, uh, it's hard to just to think back and, you know, remember everything, everything that you went through because every day was different. Uh, but at the end of the day, you know, once you got into the, uh, just with my personality, once I, no matter how frustrated or unmotivated I was in the morning or whatever, once I got into the stadium and started doing whatever rehab work I had that day, it was, I was just doing it 100% because I know, obviously, the, uh, the more you put into it, the, how good you'll get out. And where, where where does that mentality come from? Does it come from your parents? Does it come from your background? From the sacrifices that you've probably experienced? Where where does it come from? Can you tell us a little bit more of what's made uh, Kevin Partida the person that he is uh, today? Yeah, definitely my dad. Uh, I mean, I have a great support staff with my entire family, but my dad early on uh, instilled a really really big work ethic in me. Um, you know, I had. I'd go to training since, you know, eight years old or whatever it was. And if he saw me goofing around a little bit, just pretty <laughs> much say, you know, like, that's not what you're here for. If you're going to, if you want to just goof off with friends, you can do that like somewhere else. But it, when it's time to train or do whatever, whatever it is, you have to do 100% effort. Uh, some players, maybe Shea Salinas, for instance, you know, could have been track stars uh, or done <laughs> other sports. Was it always soccer for you? And when did it sort of become clear that, hey, I could have a career in the sport? Yeah, I think uh, I was always for sure soccer. Uh, just, you know, people ask, how early did you start playing? You don't mm -hmm. really remember just because you're always mm -hmm. in it. You know, I grew up, my dad was playing, my older brother was playing. So you just start playing, you know, mm -hmm. uh, at the park. And then, yeah, I just enjoyed it so much and obviously fell in love with the game, which I think uh, is huge. And then, yeah, just, I think it started becoming a bigger goal just towards the end of my college college career. But usually I just took it step by step. Uh, how did you end up? You, you speak about playing at the collegiate level, and you did. You represented the Rebels for four years, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, how was the process of getting there, and how was it, you know, to be selected in the MLS Super Draft? 
yeah, I think uh, I've always mentioned how proud I am of, of you know, being from Reno and, and uh, hopefully being able to put more eyes on Reno. Um, so I didn't, you know, it wasn't a, a big basin for, for scouts and luckily I was, I went to, I guess, the most uh, closest college in terms of state-wise. Um, played for Rich Ryerson there and then, yeah, same thing. I think, uh, you know, I wasn't up there in the charts in terms of statistics and stuff like that in terms of the draft, but uh, I felt like I, I had done enough in, in my summers mostly playing playing PDL, I think I played for four different teams, uh, PDL, and that I was I was hopeful that, you know, there was a small chance that I could get drafted. One of the teams you played for in the PDL, the Burlingame Dragons, uh, which were a, a local team in the Bay Area, you played with other, you know, current San Jose Earthquakes players like Nick Lima. Can you talk about your experience there? Yeah, it was good. I think uh, uh, I personally reached out to, uh, I think at that time, uh, it was Dana Taylor the coach, uh, just because I knew it was the San Jose Earthquakes affiliate at that mm -hmm. time. I think they had just disbanded the U23s. So, you know, I wanted to be a part of, of uh, you know, a team with, with an affiliation. But, yeah, it was good. I think, uh, you know, playing with guys from, obviously, Stanford, uh, Cal, like Nick, USF, and, you know, guys that were playing at uh, Pac-12 and big big conferences with bigger, you know, maybe better opponents, uh, it, was, it was good. Was it then that you started to get in contact, maybe be scouted by the, the Quakes organization, or was it more closer to draft today? Can you talk about the process of, of coming to San Jose? Yeah, I think, I think it was a little bit, a little bit later, uh, you know, because I think there was a lot, of, a lot of change between when I played for mm -hmm. the Dragons and by the, time, by the time I got drafted. But yeah, I don't know, may, you know, I don't know for sure uh, who's, whose idea it was and who's, uh, you know, who... Mm -hmm who I owe it to, but uh, yeah. Uh, Kevin, y you talk about obviously your experience here in America and, and climbing up the ranks, but you did mention to me that you had a, a, a stink where you were under Alianza's wings, and uh, how was that? I, I know you're a, you're a player, obviously, with a Mexican background, and you know there's a lot of players growing up with a Mexican background that tend to gravitate towards you know Liga MX or you know maybe they see themselves growing up playing for a Mexican side and and not an American side. Right. Uh, how was your experience? A and you did mention also that you were at trial with with uh, Cholos de Tijuana. Uh, can you talk a little bit about that and why was it that you weren't really set on you know representing a Mexican club yeah uh, at that time I went through through the Alianza program um, I was lucky enough to make it to the end I think they have like a regional and a national uh, portions of it uh, at the end I ended up going to on a trial with with Cholos um, they wanted they wanted me back after a couple of weeks. Uh, I spent like an extra three days there and then got <laughs> homesick, went home. But it, it was good. I think it was the first. It was definitely the first uh, taste of of you know next level soccer academy professional whatever. What was it? What was it in particular that made you homesick? Um, you know, was it? Uh, I'm sure it wasn't the food, right. uh, <laughs> but was it? Was it just not not being around family? Was it not? probably having a car what, what was it I think it just it just boils down a little bit to my personality type I was pretty shy you know once once I got there uh, I didn't and I wasn't out there uh, trying trying to make relationships right away and uh, to be fair I think uh, the coach and you know they had me talk to I remember a good memory is that I talked to Joe Corona actually at that who was, at the time was at Cholos you know trying to convince me to stay but I think it was just just me just my personality I was just a little bit hard on me. Do you, do you feel like you wasted an opportunity or do you think, uh, you know, fate just came back and paid you in, in this in this form, which is now obviously representing uh, the San Jose Earthquakes? Yeah, I think for sure thing, things could have been different. You know, uh, I talk a lot with, you know, you're just talking football with, with, with uh, friends and teammates or whatever about the difference in, in other countries as guys are going pro or, or in that type of environment at like 16, 17 years of age. And, you know, here I joined, obviously, the Quakes at, uh, I think it was 22 already. So I think things could have been different. But no, I think uh, in terms of fate, I think it was more, more than anything hard work, I think. 
When you first came to the Quakes, uh, what was your sort of plan uh, for your career, career progression? Uh, and then how did, you know, playing for Reno, which was obviously, I guess, a hometown team of yours, how did that fit into the equation? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, first of all, you're just trying to impress early on uh, whoever it is that you need to impress. And then, um, yeah, I just felt, felt honored to, to be a part of everything, you know. Uh, like I said, uh, with everything, just trying to take it day by day. And then uh, when I was playing with Reno, it was definitely special, you know, being being uh, my hometown club. You know, I was excited when, when that team, when I found the news of, of that team uh, starting up. So, yeah. Kevin, we're going to divert a for a quick second. I want to take you through a true and false exercise. Uh, it's pretty simple. You just have to either say true or false to the statements that I'm going to make. The first one is, Quakes will not only make playoffs this season, but make a deep run this year. True. That was quick, I like that. Yeah. <laughs> That's an easy one. Coach Ian Russell deserves a shot as a head coach in MLS in a year or two. True. Coming out of UNLV, you never thought you'd be a couple seasons into MLS. False. The level of play in the USL Championship League is not far off from MLS. Uh, I'm not <laughs> sure about that one. Okay. I, I want to go back to the, the question you mentioned about playing for UNLV. Uh, what gave you the confidence then that you could, you could go pro? Uh, and then, you know, having torn your ACL, I believe, uh, and I think your junior season, uh, did that sort of throw a wrench in your plans? And can you talk about that recovery process? Yeah, at the time I thought it was going to, you know, I thought, you know, because it was right before my senior year, so I thought, you know, I didn't, I wasn't sure how I was how I was I was gonna be able to come back, but uh, no, more than anything, it was it was I was working diligently, you know, um, exploring every avenue that that I had to explore in order to get to to MLS. Like I said, I played for, I think the first team I played for was the Mobsters, was when I first found mm -hmm. out about the PDL. Then I wanted to, uh, you know, be somewhere where there was more eyes, which was the Dragons. And then when I think that disbanded, so I went to FC Tucson, which I knew was one of one of the bigger clubs as well. And uh, yeah, I think that was it. Uh, Kevin, a couple of months ago, your hometown of Sparks recognized you, uh, you know, and, and actually, you know, made this ode for you. They they named uh, Kevin Partida Day, right? Uh, how special is that for you? I mean. I, I don't, I'm not much of a Sparks, uh, you know, uh, sorry. Aficionado. Yeah, aficionado, <laughs> I guess you can say. But, um, you know, I guess it's safe to say you're one of the first few, you know, quote unquote famous people to come out of, uh, come out of Sparks. Yeah, I think uh, I definitely had a, have a pretty big following in terms of, of the soccer world down there. Like I said, uh, I'm lucky enough to be, I think, the first player from Northern Nevada to play in the MLS. So. Um, in terms of that, yeah, it just makes me really, really proud. Honestly, uh, you know, I hope to, I hope that my trajectory is able to, you know, uh, put more eyes on not just Sparks, Reno, but that whole Northern Nevada area, and and hope to see more players, honestly, at the next it, level. And as a follow up to that, what do you do on Kevin Party today? No, nothing. I had a game <laughs> that day, so I just took it easy. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> Uh, what can you say about the talent in Northern Nevada? Uh, you bring that up, so now I'm I'm actually curious to to what what there is there. What 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 does it offer? Yeah, well, up up until uh, I think my club team uh, when I mean we graduated, we were 2013 graduates, so there hadn't been a lot of players not even going playing D1, you know. But uh, I mean, even in my personal growing up, you know, there was guys that were older than me, maybe two or three years older that were that I looked up to and I, I see them playing now in the Sunday Leagues and they were really, really quality players at their age and I think there's always been just a lot of talent there and it's just a matter of, you know, getting getting eyes on that on that city. Let's talk a little bit more about this season. Obviously the team had um, a, a really, really dismal 2018 and you experienced that firsthand. It started to go downhill after you got yeah. injured. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. Um, but now things, obviously, also the start of the season, four, four or five games were rocky uh, for Matias' side. Uh, but now you guys are starting to just really hit a groove. Uh, you know, what does it feel like uh, within that locker room? Um, what are what are the, the bigger objectives uh, for 2019? 
yeah right now at the moment you know things are going great i think uh obviously results wise but uh in terms of you know uh the atmosphere and everything has been pretty great since since the beginning of the season um and then in terms of goals i think i mean we right now we we take it week by week but but we definitely have it in the back of our minds that that we can make it far when Matthias talks to you and coaches you, uh, and as a team, uh, more broadly too, what is it that makes him such a special coach and makes him stand out? Uh, I think for me it's just the fact that, uh, you know, how, how big of a player he was. So, mm. I mean, right off the bat, he, you know, he kind of captures your attention. And then just uh, his level of detail and is, is, I think, one of the most, most uh, prominent things that he has. Was that immediately obvious on the preseason trip in Cancun? It seemed like that was a transformational experience for the squad. Yeah, for sure. I think he, he definitely links up a lot of, you know, j life with football. It's not just one or the other. So, you know, in terms of, you know, the way you should go about one is, is kind of the same you should go about the other. Does he ever, you know, uh, sit you guys down one on one and, and probably talk about how you should carry yourself off the field or you should work on this maybe not a particular thing that you do on the field but also off of it yeah I think some guys I mean he's definitely honest in the sense that uh, if he if he feels like he needs to point something out he'll he'll say it to you um, but yeah I think he I think if you know a lot of especially you know obviously people know that he's He's done well with uh, with young young players, so if he feels the need to say something, he's definitely willing to say it. As somebody who's bilingual, do you have sort of a role in the locker room of interpreting uh, some of the language, and has that ever been an issue in terms of communication uh, on on the field and in the locker room? In other words, are you a human duolingo? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think. I mean, when I when somebody needs me, I think more than anything between players, you know, if we're just mm -hmm. talking or whatever, and someone needs a quick quick translation uh, I'm happy to jump in but I mean he has uh, his his translator Augustine who's who gets better honestly week by week so yeah everything's fine uh, my next question is about where you feel like you personally fit uh, into Matias's squad uh, going forward yeah I think uh, honestly I've played so many positions at this point but yeah I like that center midfield role uh, you know either one of the the two uh, that he plays with and you know, that's that's probably my preferred role. And, and what are your personal goals uh, going forward this season? Uh, you know, primarily I think we're, we're doing great as a team, so to continue, you know, what we've been doing has been working, so uh, take, it, take advantage of my opportunities and, you know, just keep being a good teammate. We hear a lot about the culture that Matias has created. Uh, how, how do you feel like that's developed and um, I think one of the interesting things is now as the team is uh, getting a new player in Carlos Fierro, um, being able to integrate players into the squad, especially in, in such a crowded winger position where in other teams, you know, that could make for a toxic arrangement, but it seems like uh, in this locker room, uh, it's a family and you guys are, uh, are able to handle that uh, quite well. Yeah, I think we definitely have a, a lot of unity in the locker room uh, from the top to the bottom, honestly. So. Uh, no, I see us. I see us welcoming Carlos early on, and just you know helping him get adjusted as as soon as possible, and just joining the family. Kevin, I have the fun questions for you. <laughs> so, f the first one is why KP nineteen? Ah, that was my number uh, for most of my childhood growing up. And um, was it unavailable when you came to the Quakes? What, what number uh, do you have now? No, I have eighty nine. Eighty nine. Why eighty nine? So that's my that's my older brother's birth year. So. Okay, oh, gotcha. and, and what what does your older brother mean to you? Uh, he was a lot. I mean, uh, uh, introduced me to the game pretty much, you know, and just always been part of my support staff. And who was your favorite player growing up? Who'd you model yourself after? Dino, Ronaldinho. Ronaldinho. Yeah. Interesting. <laughs> oh, you're playing in that midfield role now. I know last season when you came into the squad, it was at a left back position. Was that the first you'd played there? Uh, at the left back, yeah, I got to play that first game uh, at right back. I think when I came into the into you know from the draft, I think uh, that was a role that the club was looking for. So you know mm -hmm. they were they were trying a few of us there, and uh, our coach that year was was uh, you know he thought I, I could I could give something to the team in that position. So I think that was the reasoning behind that. And what do you feel like your strongest points are uh, tactically in, in your soccer game? 
uh, I think you know recovering a lot of balls and then just being being composed and you know trying to keep possession uh, I think a uh, little bit of it is you know I try not to not to uh, turn the ball over that much. Mm. And, and you speak of recovering balls, obviously that's something that's really important uh, in Matias's system of sort of man marking, high press. Uh, how does he train that to you guys? How does how does that work? Uh, it's such a big difference it seems from how the Quakes have played in the past. Yeah, I think uh, you know it's a system that he's he's worked with forever, so he knows he knows it, the ins and outs of it and obviously uh so he any questions we have, uh, you know, he can answer them easily and it's just more than anything, you know, a matter of accountability in, in terms of every individual. Uh, take us back to your debut. Um, what were the uh, the feelings that you were that you were going through that you were experiencing, and did you have a lot of you know uh, butterflies in your stomach? And has that kind of worn off now as as time has gone by? Yeah, that first game was special. Uh, it was a little bit mesmerizing, but I mean, once you, once you're once the whistle blows, you know, you kind of the butterflies go away but uh you know definitely a little bit of it has come back you know since the injury like you said uh, you ask yourself some questions sometimes about you know if you'll be if you'll be the same player but uh yeah i think it just takes time to to kind of you know gain that confidence do you, do you feel like you're the same player right or do you even feel like you're you're a better player than you were before the injury happened no i feel like i'm the same player i think uh you know most of most of the things i do are the same What's been your coolest experience playing in Major League Soccer? Sometimes, from our perspective, it's being able to talk to players like Zlatan. Uh, but as a player, uh, what's something you've gotten to do that you would have never expected, maybe? Uh, I think that first game, even though it was it was an Open Cup game at Timbers, was was definitely you know important. And then the Cal was a part of the Cali Classico last year, so mm -hmm. you were marking Zlatan. that game. That game in general was yeah. was it was fun, really. And, and then this year. Uh, recently, the team went down, beat LA Galaxy 3-1 on their home grounds. Uh, was that something you guys knew you could do, or are you surprising even yourselves at this point with how strong the the team is on the field? No, I don't. Th I don't think we're surprised at all. I think, uh, you know, we just we honestly just go out and and work work uh, as hard as we can, and and just uh, things have been falling our way lately. Well, all eyes are on San Jose at the moment. It seems like the entire league and everyone who's covering it is is talking quakes almost 24-7. So the reflectors are definitely on you guys. The pressure is there. How do you guys, and we asked this question to Matias Almeida, how do you guys balance that? How do you not let it get to your head, given the fact that you guys obviously have something bigger in mind, and that is making in, into the playoffs and, and potentially surprising uh, more than a few people? Yeah, I think I think it just goes back to the culture, you know, uh we come in every day and you know work hard every day and and uh focus on preparing preparing the right way and taking care of all the details and then uh luckily it's been working like I said. Well, there you have it. A lovely interview with the man himself, Kevin Partida, who we are extremely grateful. Thank you so much yeah, for for accepting the invitation and for making it out here. Please subscribe, leave a like, leave a comment. Uh, let us know who you would like us to interview next. Uh, until next time, this is Joel Soria, Alex Morgan, signing off. See you later.